It's no longer enough to be diverse when it comes to skin tones. Now you need to be diverse when it comes to body weight tons, I suppose. Well, at least that's what they're saying about X-Men 97, where we are hearing word now from the creators behind the show that body positivity will be part of the mutant experience. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Pro Channel, the place where we go to send out the zanies and get you back to common sense when it comes to entertainment that you love. And today we have Jonas J. Campbell, investigative reporter for that park place, joining us. Welcome back, sir. Oh, so good to be here. And uh, I'm here to represent uh, the blob, otherwise known as Frederick Dukes. You are no blob, Jonas. No blob, I say. But, uh, well, the blob might find a good place when it comes to this show because, well, any type of body that is not, what should you say, ideal? has been looked at and brought into, uh, we'll see what we have to say here. This by John F. Trent out of thatparkplace.com. X-Men 97 lead character designer, Amelia Vidal, confirms characters were redesigned with body diversity in mind. And uh, Jonas, don't know about you, but I never thought that if we were going to bring back a show that you needed to redesign the show and recast the characters of the show and redo the show. I just kind of thought the reason you brought back a show was because the show was good. That's a really good point. And uh, also, I, I don't really want a diversity of bodies. I want big superhero Greek god kind of bodies, you know? Yeah, that's what you would think. But, uh, you know, maybe Storm will have love handles. I doubt it because <laughs> she's not the right color of person to receive the love handles. But here we go. X-Men 97 lead character designer Amelia Vidal confirmed that the characters for the show were redesigned with body diversity in mind. In an interview with Animation Magazine, the outlet's Tom McLean wrote, lead character designer Amelia Vidal says she took advantage of the revival to bring in a full variety of body diversity. They're always taking full advantage of reviving popular things and then reshaping it in the way that they want. Vidal informed him, for example, if we take Jean, Rogue, Storm, and Jubilee, they all have different body proportions, heights, age, physical builds, and posture attitudes. The X-Men are so different from each other. Celebrating those differences makes each character unique and special. Um, Jonas, if I recall the X-Men, they didn't look like one another in the original. So what the heck is this about? I got a feeling that it's more than just posture. What, what do you think? I don't remember Wolverine and Beast being represented as having the same posture as Cyclops in the original. So what well, is this actually fair, about, you think? I will say that Wolverine and Beast do kind of resemble each other in that haircut there. But uh, other than that, yeah, they, they, they do tend to look different just because uh, that's how comic books work. Uh, uh, unless you are, of course, Morph, whose superpower is to look like everyone else. Yeah, poor Morph. Morph is going to be the, uh, the one that has to take all the brunt of, of body diversity for all of us. On top of Vidal confirming the characters were redesigned due to body diversity, the show's director, Jake Castorena, also explained the show's art style was changed in order to, here we go again, stay relevant. He told the outlet, it needs to be the show we remember, but it has to be in 4K. Oh, wow. What a, thank you. We had no Ooh. idea about that, Jake. You've really rocked our socks when it comes to understanding what it is you do. Because the reality is we've learned so much just in the art form of TV animation itself. From what works, what doesn't work, technical advancements, production advancements, artistic advancements. To do the show verbatim as it was, it would be difficult to stay relevant. Except you're reviving a show with a particular look. So the whole goal is to look like that. Yet, Jonas, this is like reviving Rudolph the Red-Nosed Rain Reindeer and saying, we don't want to do that bank and rest or that rank and bass stuff. We don't want to do that stop motion puppetry. We're going to make it for a new audience. It's going to be completely different. Rudolph's going anime, baby. What are they, you know, what are I, they doing? I, I, I think they don't understand the power of the binge model and the fact that with streaming, everything old is new. So people be, will be watching the old one as they go towards the new one. So when they change things, there's going to be a... a, a, a it sounds like there's going to be a little bit of a whiplash for the audience here. Whiplash, indeed. Maybe whiplash for those who thought this was going to do well. I don't know. Maybe it'll be good. I still don't know. We'll we'll review it when it lands. One of the most bizarre comments in the interview came from producer Brad Winderbaum. It's a cool last name. While discussing the change in art style, first he revealed how they are making it look like 90s show despite changing the art style. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Such. How do you make it look like this thing that that you're not going to make it look like? Jeez, Louise. Part of the design of the overall look of the show is to create a small video transfer effect over the animation to give it a little bit of that television in the 90s p uh, patina. Next, he claimed we have a strict code of ethics. Okay, you have a strict... However, in this very next sentence, he made it clear that they don't. But there are specific points where we crack it on purpose for what I think is great dramatic effect. I, this is the strangest thing. I don't... I mean, I do not just... understand why... I mean, l l just go back to that picture if you don't mind for a second. Um, what I, I I don't remember who said this, but uh, maybe it was Andrew, Andy Andrew over there from uh, the Ripperverse. Uh, did he say that? Uh, what What are the three things that happen when Gambit uh, charges an object? Do, does it A explode, B explode, or C explode? It's a great point. And also, how in the world is he touching Wolverine's skeleton? And does this also mean that all of Wolverine's skeleton is charged? Which would be a painful experience. One might think. Uh, you know, so this is the kind of stuff where break all the rules. Uh, the show doesn't need to look like the original show. Give give just a wee bit of, uh, of uh, uh, nostalgia bait to trick people into coming back. Change up Rogue. Change up all the body types. You know, we got to modernize it. Got to modernize it. And I say, well, why did you bring it back then? Just make your own darn show. If you wanted to do this with the X-Men, if you wanted a body positivity show, then do a body positivity show with the X-Men. Working out with the X-Men. Jazzercising with the X-Men. Your own show. Don't reboot something and then pretend that it's the same thing. No, you just wanted an X-Men show. And the only way you could convince people to watch your X-Men show was to pretend it was the old X-Men show that they loved. That's the whole deal. Jonah's final thoughts on this crazy topic. Uh, I think it's a, a bizarre thing that they, they all know that IPs are marketability. And as we've gone through this Nelson Peltz white paper, we're just getting into that Nelson Peltz white paper. They're bringing in all those Bob Iger and Disney quotes talking about the strength of the Fox assets and all of those assets, those intellectual properties that they were going to integrate but instead of integrating them they decided to change them or ignore them and it sounds like with the fox x-men stuff they're using the name so that they can get a step up but they're going to ignore it and they're going to change it and there sounds like they might shame the uh the existing audience so um i don't know it sounds like repetition of the same thing we've been seeing the last few years i hope it's good but uh my hopes are are not very high for this one you got to say, when you look at the old show and you're like, okay, well, there's tall characters and short characters, fat characters and skinny characters, and then you hear what they're saying about, oh, no, we're we're going to make a diversity of, of body types this time. We're going to re really make a difference. It's like, if your English doesn't make sense, then probably what you're doing isn't what you say. Just a thought, folks. But now it's your turn. Hop in down below and become an active participant in the discussion. Drop a comment down below. Also, like, share, subscribe. Click it. Stick it to the algorithms. It's the notification bell. Folks, if you're not yet a member of the Patreon for the WDW Pro effort, we'll join on in at www.patreon.com slash WDW Pro, where this week we are dissecting and analyzing the white paper out of the Triangle Group as we get ready to cover all of the impacts that will happen as Nelson Peltz has laid bare the sins of Disney. Have no idea how this is going to play out over the next two weeks because Disney was not ready for the density of the data that's in this document. There is no doubt about it. But folks, continue hanging with us. Come back to the channel over and over again as we are about to be covering what could be the capture of the Walt Disney Company by, wait for it, sensible people. And considering oh the topic of this video, well, <laughs> maybe we could use some sense back inside the House of Mouse. Folks, check out That Park Place, the, the uh, channel where Jonas J. Campbell and Vash Sky are co-anchors. And as we say at the end of every single video, and we mean it, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun.